today we are talking about the Rolex Batman. Yeah. So welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian. I drink coffee and talk about watches, and today we are talking about the Rolex Batman, the GMT Master II, reference 116710BLNR. So I've had this watch about two weeks, and I'm gonna talk about why I chose this watch, a few specifications around it, and then my kind of relationship with the watch and how it fits in with the rest of my collection. So when I was looking for an investment watch, a new watch that needed to be an investment piece, I think it was about two and a half, three years ago. It was between these two guys, the Kermit and the Batman. I ultimately chose the Kermit because I found the green to be more of a rich color. Uh, I found the overall watch to feel a bit more classy, but yet a bit more rugged and more of a tool watch. And, it, and this is more of a tool watch. This is designed for pilots and this is designed for divers. The, the environments are completely different. So I went for the Kermit. I also felt like the Kermit was a better investment because it was a celebration watch. It celebrates the 50th anniversary of the Rolex Submariner. The Batman is just a hard to find watch and that's the only thing that kind of makes it special. But it is still special and so it, it is still an investment. It's not a massive investment. I paid retail for, I got it fresh from the AD. So when I first tried this on around two and a half, three years ago, I disliked the shiny polished center links and I disliked the shiny ceramic bezel. Now when you try these watches on, it's usually in uh, a shop and there's lights shining right down on you and there's lots of lights around you and it's quite a false environment. And I think that adds to the shininess. When you get this watch into normal life and you don't have all those lights around you, the shininess really isn't there. It's actually quite a subtle watch. It doesn't feel anywhere near as blingy when it's on as opposed to when you're trying it on in a, a jewelry shop. Also, the difference between the blue and the black is very, very subtle. When you're in a dark environment or you tilt it to the side, then you can see it. But when you're in daylight, when you're outside, it all just comes off as gray as opposed to blue and black. So it's a, again, that was quite a nice surprise. So let's have a brief look at some of the specifications. We have a 40 millimeter wide case. We have a lug width of 20 millimeters. I've measured lug to lug to be 46 millimeters, but the center links on the end links do not collapse in line with the lugs. And I've measured the distance between the two center links to be 50 millimeters. Now we have a 24 point ceramic bi-directional bezel, which is incredibly smooth. And we have a triple lock crown, which allows us to have a water resistance of 100 meters. This has the oyster bracelets, and the clasp has an extension. It's only a five millimeter extension, but it's an extension nonetheless. And it's pretty useful. It works, it does the job. It's nowhere near as good as the glide lock extension on the diver watches, but it's an extension and it's, it's, it's quite a, a substantial one. Substantial so far as it's strong, not really because it has a, a great function. But the clasp itself is absolutely incredible, certainly in comparison to the previous uh, folded steel clasps and the bracelet again the whole thing is completely solid even the center links are solid as opposed to on my Kermit where the center links are hollow. So that's all the general specifications. Now the movement inside is a bit of a funny point I think. This is powered by the caliber 3186 which is an upgrade from the 3185 so far as this has a parachrome hairspring which means that it's, it's less affected by um, shock, magnetic fields uh, and fluctuations in temperature. The parachrome hairspring basically just allows it to be a lot more accurate in different environments. Now the new Pepsi GMT that was launched at Basel World has a new movement in. It has the caliber 3285 but I bought this two weeks ago and this is part of the same range. So why doesn't this have the 3285? The main difference between the two movements is uh, the, the 3285 is slightly more accurate, but the biggest difference is the fact that this has a 40 hour power reserve. The 3285 has a 70 hour power reserve, which I imagine they stole off of the Tudor movements because they all come with 70 hour power reserves. Now, my only guess is that they pre-built, that Rolex pre-built a whole load of the 3186 movements 
and they're just having to run out of those. So I imagine maybe in a year or so when this is, if this is still going, I wouldn't be surprised if they discontinued this uh, in a year. But if this is still going, then I imagine that they will then transition into this coming with the 3285. But it is a bit annoying that this is in the same family as a new movement, yet they haven't done that transition. It's not uncommon for Rolex to do this, that Rolex have done lots of transitional models. They kind of drip feed in changes. It just seems that at the moment, certainly with the past few generations of watches, there, there has been massive change. So with the Maxi Case, Maxi Dial and so on, um, with, with the Submarines and, and with the GMTs actually. Now, I'm absolutely in love with this piece. One thing that I really dislike, it's not about this watch, it's about all Rolex watches. I don't understand, maybe you guys know the answer, but I don't understand why Rolex don't put anti-reflective coating on the sapphire glass. They have anti-reflective coating on the Cyclops, and so the Cyclops is pristine. Maybe they want the Cyclops to stand out, but I just think it's, it's nuts that they don't put anti-reflective coating on the glass. <laughs> you can get watches at, at less than a tenth of the price of this with anti-reflective coating. So it's, it's certainly not cost. And I don't think it could be anything to do with changing the color or aesthetics. I, I just don't get it. And it, it kind of pisses me off because it's uh, for a company that, that are obsessive about things like using ceramic or, or using um, a, a certain hairspring to, to make the watch more accurate. Why don't you make the watch more legible by just putting bloody anti-reflective coating on it? You can put it on the inside as well so it doesn't scratch off. It's, it will always be there. I think Omega uh, put it on the outside and on the inside. So that's, that's one thing that pisses me off about, um, about Rolex. So my relationship between these two watches, I have other watches, but these two are kind of my, my heavy hitter watches at the moment. Um, I, I know there are, there are far superior watches out there and superior watches uh, for less of the money. Um, but these are my, my these are my pride and joys. I, I, I don't really give a shit what anyone else thinks. These these are my babies, and and I treat them as as such. This watch I bought as a daily, and then the price has increased stupidly to the point of I, I didn't really feel comfortable walking around with pretty much a ten thousand pound watch. I mean, a lot of them are going for over ten thousand pounds. This is a bit bashed up, so I'm not sure how much it would it would actually fetch, but. It would fetch a shitload of money and I don't really want that much money on my wrist. But it's funny because my relationship with this has changed. I feel more comfortable wearing it now. I kind of felt like I wanted to keep it in pristine condition and it's not in pristine condition because I've been wearing it. The, the, the lugs are a bit scuffed, the bracelet, the clasp is all scuffed up. Um, so it's, it does feel used and I actually really enjoy it looking used. And I do believe that's what watches should look like. But this, these two watches have a double purpose. Not only are they nice watches for me to enjoy, but they are also investment pieces. And I know that's going to upset so many people. That's, it, that's probably the biggest topic that I get questions or hate about is the fact that I use watches as investments. This is nearly doubled in price, so that's argument over. You can use watches as investments. So my relationship has changed. I feel more comfortable wearing this, despite the fact this is worth considerably more than the Batman. It's probably because this is in pristine condition. I've never owned a watch from new, and I kind of feel like I want to keep it in that condition. So I feel like this is more of an event watch for me, and this is an every now and then watch. If I go to watch events, then I might take one of these. Um, I'm unlikely to take this out simply because I, I just want to keep it nice and shiny. It, it is shiny. I want to keep it nice and shiny. So I, I think I now feel more comfortable taking this out and about, which is good. It's good. It's, it's taken me nearly three years to enjoy this guy. So uh, it's, it's about time. These guys are going to live in safe deposit boxes. And that's, that, that's just how I have my relationship with these watches. They, they are part investments. They are for me to enjoy. And to stop me from wearing them every day, they're going to live in a safe deposit box. It's also cheaper on the house insurance as well to have them out of the house. So I'm absolutely over the moon with this thing. I think it, it goes with my style now uh, just as much as, as the Kermit. It feels incredibly comfortable to wear. It does feel slightly bulkier than the 16610, the previous, uh, the non-ceramic Submariner. But it's not uncomfortable bulky. It's, it's a very, a very nice weight on your wrist and the... It just wears perfectly. I, I think it's incredible. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Do let me know what you think of the Batman. What do you guys think of the Kermit versus the Batman? I think the Kermit is is cooler. It's certainly worth a lot more, uh, especially this one because it's got the engraving on the rehort and I've got box and papers. I've, I've got the whole shebang with this. 
um, although the box is a bit <laughs> is a bit tatty, but I've I've got everything with this guy. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Check me out on Instagram at Bark and Jack, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.